Hello, today I want to give you some tips on stability and buckling. In the first example we look to this girder and start with a linear analysis. Then we try a geometric nonlinear analysis with TH3 and this fails. I will just show you this. We have just analyzed a linear load case and that looks good. If we now go to the input and start a TH3 analysis with the same loading, we get problems. If we look to the protocol in the beginning, we see the first iteration got a residual, okay, that's okay. Then the program tries to update the stiffness due to the geometric effect and it gets a report, stiffness got negative. Now the program tries to do something with reducing the stiffness automatically, but the program cannot get any equilibrium and so we have uh, no result in this example. Now our first possibility would be to check the load cases 9000. That is the iteration sequence. We, we make a constant magnitude of maybe 6. And if we then look to the load cases, we cannot see a lot. It goes a little bit up and down. Now we could try to look for the load level that is possible. Therefore we have a command ulti where automatically the load is increased. I just run this little input file and we see the last load case had a load factor of only 0.5. If we look to the result at the end we find a nice table where we see that the program starts with a small factor, increases the factor and then found no convergence for a specific load level. Then it divides the step again, so this was the last load level. But if we plot the deformation on the load increase, we just see a linear behavior, so no problem. So why can we not increase the load? For this it is best to make a buckling eigenvalue analysis. We want to see 10 eigenvalues based on the stresses of here primary load case 100. Primary load case 100 was just the linear load case with 100%. If we run this little file and look to the output we see that we have got, got a buckling factor of 0 0.538. And this is now very important. That means that something happens at this load factor. If we now look to the animator and look to the buckling form, we can see quite clear the reason the diagonals are falling out, the pressure is too high here in these elements. Here again the short overview. The TH3 analysis with 1.0 loads failed and so we can try to make a load increase. What further possibilities do we have? There is a nice check in ASE load case test where a little dynamic stiffness is added for the analysis and you can check the results in the animator. If you have a primary load case available, you can make a buckling eigenvalues, especially you could also use a load step of the geometric load increase. Or if the TH3 analysis cannot run, you can also run this TH3 analysis with system eta 1, so only one step, and then make buckling eigenvalues. 
If you still have problems, you can add in your input file a dynamic stiffness, maybe a little dynamic relaxation. And also of interest, you can increase the load and make dynamic eigenvalues on these load levels. Usually if you load a peer, then the dynamic eigenvalues will swing in a longer period if you have more stress on your beam. Now some additional remarks on buckling eigenvalues. Therefore the best example is in the ASA folder, ASA 9 quad Euler beam, where we can calculate the critical Euler load by hand, 540 kN. If we make a load increase and apply a little horizontal load, we can get this load deformation curve where we also end at 540 kN. Again, we see here the technique of the ALTI load increase. Now we want to make buckling eigenvalues on this example. We see a load factor of 5 first buckling eigenfrequency, second is horizontally in the other y direction and so on. The load factor 5 means it is 5 times greater than the load that had been applied. We applied 100 kN, so 540 kN. Now what would happen if we would have a load case where we have 100 kN going up? then we would get tension in our beam. If we then analyze buckling eigenvalues, the program will also calculate them, but they are negative. So also for a stressed beam, we get buckling factors minus 5. We load our system with a positive load going down, and we just make eigenvalue analysis. Here we got a lot of negative eigenvalues and only two positive eigenvalues. So what does these negative eigenvalues mean? They mean they would appear if we would load our system from the bottom and because here in this example the lower girder, the lower beam, is a little bit smaller, of course this buckling form is more critical, so with a lower factor, than the, bu than the buckling of the upper beam. Now to get more positive buckling eigenvalues, that usually are more of interest, we can use an eigenvalue shift with Elmin Auto. Then the program ASE automatically adds a little bit of the geometric stiffness to the stiffness and then solves this eigenvalue problem where only a part is scaled with the lambda buckling eigenvalue factor. With this now we get more positive buckling eigenvalues that usually are more of interest for us. In membrane structures or when we have a lot of cables we always get a lot of negative eigenvalues. Therefore the Elmin Auto is really very comfortable. Also here if we have this bridge and solve our system without the eigenvalue shift, we only get eigenvalues like this that are not of interest for us because these are buckling eigenvalues with the cable under tension, so they get an, they are negative. If we use the eigenvalue auto shift Elmin Auto, we immediately get the first buckling factor with the information that we want, this result. Also in incremental launching there can appear a lot of instabilities and there is a nice example also in the CSM manual, the theoretical part where we can look at this.
Usually you have a lot of elements in your systems and then it is not so easy to find the solution why it is problematic. So you can look to win graph and look to the node rotations because often the rotations cause problems. You can add the warping if you have small steel sections. Of course you can try a smaller load level to get an equilibrium with this and then make buckling eigenvalues. And of course also look to the 90,000 iteration results. In this example the problem was a torsion in the main beam here. The main beam was under a big compression and we got this failure in the element and now you can decide what to do. If you have other nonlinear problems you can check the energy. The energy is just a value also for the deformation because energy is just the product of load multiplied with deformation. As the loading usually is constant, the energy is a value for the deformation. You can also enforce the collapse of a system. There is a nice input in the program ASE. If you input LM, you can delete one single element. Here we see the result of this analysis. We cut away one cable and see the dynamic effect of this. Such an analysis is usually only possible including a dynamic time step. With additional dynamic stiffness you can also solve problems that would be instable from the beginning. Here we have a membrane lying stress-free on the ground and this first state would be totally instable. But if we add a dynamic relaxation we can really blow up this cushion. Here now are some further examples for stability problems in the ASE dot folder, ASE 11, overturning, then in the nonlinear beam, ASE AQB3, lateral buckling, with pre-stress or without pre-stress. For shells, we have the ASE 12, plate buckling, ASE 13, a shell buckling, and an arch bridge, nonlinear quad with a cracked concrete without reinforcement and web buckling. Usually you use a stress-free pre-deformation for your geometric nonlinear analysis and this can best defined with the command oblique. A stress-free pre-camber we take the load K701 and say the maximum deformation shall be 5 mm so this buckling eigenvalue shape 701 is scaled so that it has 5 millimeters and applied stress-free. So now we have finished our overview over the stability buckling problems and thanks for your attention.